Hey students, let's dig even deeper into exponents to see if we really get it. And this time what I'm going to throw at you are some variables, some letters to see if I can get you to panic a little bit. So let's go ahead here and take a look. Um, first thing, let's just read it. Okay, how about that? <laughs> Which of the following are equivalent to z times z? And then there I am being a jerk. I'd like you to choose all that apply. There's more than one right answer in this particular case. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to see one like this on the GED when, where there's more than one right answer. But what could happen on the GED? is that the right answer that you think of or the right way that you would go isn't expressed in the answers. And then so what do you do with that case? You have to be able to recognize equivalent expressions, things that mean the same as what you meant. So let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, just looking at z times z would intimidate a lot of students. Like, I don't know what z is. So if that freaks you out, replace that with a number. <laughs> Let's think about if we had like, say, for example, seven times seven. Well, we learned in the exponent lesson that if we had repeated multiplication, repeated multiplication, the same number, in this case, Z, or as we were thinking about it, maybe seven, uh, the same number multiplying repeatedly, we could use an exponent. And how would we use it? Well, again, let's look at numbers first so we're less confused. We would look at the number that's multiplying. That's the base. That would be the big number with its feet on the floor when we go to write it in exponential, um, ex as an exponential expression, sorry. And then we would use an exponent to say how many times that same factor was multiplying. We saw that same number multiplying. So in this case, it'd be two. So that'd be seven to the second power. Well, don't let it intimidate you that it's letters. Same idea. What number is multiplying? Well, it's this number Z. You say, Kate, that's not a number. It is, guys. <laughs> that's the point of variables. It's a number, but it's just when we, we don't know which number it is. Like, could be seven, but maybe it's 11 or 153 or negative 64. Or maybe Z is just standing in for any number. And so we have to not panic when I call Z a number, okay, you guys? <laughs> so um, this is the number Z, yes, multiplying by itself. See, multiplying how many times? Well, we have two Zs multiplying. And so that's the same as Z to the second power. And so, yay, we can choose that one. Now, a uh, really big caution, it doesn't go the other way. It's not invertible. You can't switch which one has its feet on the floor, the base, and which one is in the air, the exponent. So z to the second power, you cannot assume that that's the same as 2 to the z power. In fact, I can only think of one possible example where that would be true in infinity minus one cases, that would not be true. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, don't assume this guy. That's a common student mistake. Um, another common student mistake is to mix up this idea of z times z with z plus z. Okay, so give you a great example, like for example, five times five. Yeah, I could rewrite that as five squared, but a lot of students will get muddled up and they'll tell me, oh, but five plus five must be five squared then too. Yeah, that's not true, right? <laughs> five plus five is 10, five times five is 25. So it's not the same as repeated addition. So be really careful not to pick this guy, the Z plus Z. Exponents, I'm gonna say this, write it in your notes if you don't know it. Exponents are a shortcut way of expressing repeated multiplication, not repeated addition, not repeated addition. Now you might say to me, well, then how do we express repeated addition? Guys, you've known that since third grade. <laughs> Think about when you count the same number of over and over again. Like for example, if I, I was counting fives, five, 10, 15, 
20. I'm adding the same number over and over again, but that's also my five times tables. So if you had the same number adding two times, that'd be five plus five, or you could also call it, uh, let's do it in the other order, five times two, uh, a five two times. And so it's the same when you have letters, um, Z plus Z, Whoa, I just ran out of space. Z plus Z is the same as 2Z, but that's definitely not the same as Z squared. So let's rule out this 2Z. And now you keep hearing me use that language again and again and again. Z squared, Z squared, Z squared. What is that word square mean? Well, that's just another way of saying the exponent too. So E is also correct answer, but be careful, Z cubed is not the same, a cube is an exponent of three. And so the two correct answers here are B and E. And I'm really glad we stepped into this example because our last example um, that we did, we did number four from the experience level practice, very similar question, but yet simpler because it didn't involve the letters. You could actually simplify the expressions, like do the math and see if they equaled up to each other. This one you can't. I mean, you could plug in a number, I guess, and try it and see what happened, but it really takes a little more understanding to look at it when it's letters. And so that makes it a great exercise for really increasing that mathematical reasoning that you need for the GED. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them.